Welcome this morning, and I appreciate you taking a few minutes to join us. This is going to be a brief um, introduction to our first of our solution series. And this will be focusing on choosing a lathe chuck and considering the lathe chuck that's right for your application. You'll see this slide at the start of a lot of Shunk uh, webinars or virtual meetings. Uh, nobody might ever told you, but uh, there's pictures of some of our dedicated colleagues in Germany in uh, manufacturing engineering and, and our brand ambassador. Uh, Jens Lehmann, which you may not like the Patriots, but he's the equivalent of Tom Brady over there, so uh, close relationship with him and Shunk. So let's get started. So this graphic here shows kind of the flow of Shunk products through a typical uh, manufacturing value stream. First you see rotational work holding at the top, that would be your chucks and jaws on a turning center. Uh, next would be stationary work holding devices, electro-permanent magnets, and pelletized systems for your machining centers. And then there are the related tool holding systems to hold all those important uh, cutting tools for performing your cutting operations. And then finally, the gripping systems uh, that Shunk offers are end of arm tooling uh, for pick and place of parts and manipulation of those parts. Um, these are the four product groups and we're gonna focus on rotating work holding today. Uh, that's going to be our chucks and jaws. Next, please. So this is the kinds of turning centers that you're going to see in uh, your facilities. We're all familiar with them both. Uh, on the right is the horizontal turning center, where the chuck faces either to the right or left, and the tools approach from that direction. And on the left is the vertical lathe or VTL, where the chuck faces upward and the tools come down to approach it. The reason we show this graphic is because traditionally we're all familiar with the horizontal lathe, but the vertical lathe is gaining a lot of market share and it's very important to look at the work holding in that as well. But for today's purposes, we're gonna talk about the horizontal lathe. So not brand specific, but this is an example of the type of turning centers that companies are investing in. And it's your money and it's a lot of money. Um, there's been some huge advancements in the last few decades. Um, and I'd like to review a few of those. So. so let's touch on a few of those. We have the larger tool magazines. So typically in the past, if you had 10 or 12 tools in a static turret, you had a fairly modern machine and you could process an operation. Now it's standard to choose between that or tool magazines holding 25, 50, 100 or more tools. These tools are set up in there, they're touched off, they're ready to go and they can be pulled up in a program and come out instantly to perform a feature without doing any more modifications. So that's a huge advancement. Next, we've got these high-speed multi-axis spindles, which turns this machine into virtually a lathe and a mill. At the same time, we can create multi-axis geometries with very small tools turning at proper cutting speeds. So massive advancement. Next, the quick change tool holders. What used to be a chore where somebody would have to go in and loosen some screws and take dirty tools out and blow out pockets and insert new tools and touch them off and indicate them, those days are rapidly fading. These tools can be changed in a matter of seconds. So the continued reduction in cycle time and throughput is helped by that. We've got these futuristic controllers. You see them when you're, you know, in your factory. They, they look like a movie almost going on there. They can they take a lot of input from the operator setup guy, and they can also output a lot of data. In addition to that, they have many of them have CAM software integrated for rapid prototyping right at the machines. And then we have main and sub spindles. So combined with all those other features, we're able to drop complete parts with very complex uh, geometry and features on them. But there's one thing that hasn't changed at all on these machines through all these advancements. And that's the OEM lathe chuck. And it should be a glaring thing, but it's often overlooked. It's delivered with the machine. It's not discussed ahead of time. And so let's take a little bit deeper look at that chuck. So this is a wedge hook design chuck. And it's the type of thing that I started with 30 years ago. Um, to put it in perspective, uh, this chuck was designed, this style chuck was designed in 1902 
So if you think about how long ago that was, obviously that was before man had conquered powered flight. So, you know, there's been a lot of developments since then, but we still are given this chuck with our machines. Um, it's, it's a robust chuck, it lasts a long time, but when you integrate it into a machine platform like the one we're looking at, it really is a serious obstacle. It's a hindrance to the throughput, the profit, and increased capacity that this machine's designed to deliver. Um, you know, it's uh, got some shortcomings. It takes a long time to change jaws. Uh, the guidances aren't that precise. Uh, it's easily contaminated. So you have uneven forces between the jaws. So a lot of part deformation and a lot of manual effort to change from job to job. So we're gonna take a look at this shunk portfolio in a minute. This is kind of outlines the different categories of chucks that Shunks offers. But first I'd like to take a look at a picture to the side here. So you see a lot of pictures of buildings from the air and, and people wanna talk about them, but the, I'm particularly proud of this picture. Um, Shunk has nine manufacturing facilities in Germany and across Europe. And this is our mangan plant, which is dedicated to manufacturing our lathe chucks. You can see a nice addition going on in the back there as our business grows. Well, one of the things that near and dear to me is how Shunk owns the lathe chuck manufacturing. Um, at Mangan, we design and manufacture all the chucks for Shunk. These aren't private labeled or made by somebody else. We sell the chucks, we offer pre-sales support so we can take a look at your parts and your processes and give you very experienced guidance on what will work for you. And then we provide after sales service and support right all out of our US based team in Morristown, North Carolina. So that's a very important picture to me. We're all very proud of that plant. So this is our portfolio of the Shunk Chuck overview. It's broken out into four categories based on kind of the way that we look at the applications in our decision making process when selecting chucks. So the first series that we want to look at is our conventional series. So within the conventional series, I just want to touch on a couple of the chucks. Uh, we won't get too bogged down in the details, but some of them are important. The first one at the top is the NCK Plus, and that is a power chuck as well. The important thing to know is that is a direct drop-in replacement for a Kitagawa B-Series chuck. Uh, it's very competitively priced, and it's an excellent value uh, for your OEM chuck application. So that is a matter of taking that, your free chuck that you get with your lathe off, putting that right on. Uh, the Rota TP further down is a pneumatic chuck. Um, it's great for plug and play with pneumatics. Yep. And then down at the bottom within our rotational group, it's important for me to mention our THL steady rest. Um, we provide a lot of steady rest solutions to our customers. And for you folks that are using steady rest, you know how important that piece of uh, engineering is to your product. Um, these are very robust steady rests and we support them right out of Raleigh in Mooresville, North Carolina with parts and service. So if you have steady rest issues, please contact us. So we'll move over to the flexible line, we call it. So this line of chucks are selected chucks that distinguish themselves with their high flexibility when small lots are needed. Now they can also run high production volumes. That's, you know, that's true too, but when you're switching out and doing a lot of changeovers, we take a look at the flexible line. The THW Plus is at the top. That's one of our flagship chucks. It's a uh, power wedge bar design, uh, quick change chuck system. Uh, and uh, it's uh, one of our first go-to chucks. Uh, the NCX, next one down, is a, is a drop-in replacement for a Kitagawa Big Bore series and also offers the quick change feature. Uh, so you can have that rapid setup. Uh, changeover. THW Vario is for customers that need traditional chucking but also need the ability to have modular OD and ID uh, collet systems. So that's a great choice as well. Now the Rota S Plus is our standard three jaw manual chuck. And when it comes to manual chucks, I feel this is by far the best three jaw manual chuck on the market. 
high clamping forces, even clamping forces. In addition to that, it's a quick change. It's a matter of pushing a button on the side of the chuck, removing the jaw, flipping it around for the next stop, or installing another jaw. Uh, great product. The next one down, the Rota S Flex, is a very unique modular system from Shunk. We typically see it on VTLs, but it's used in other applications. Um, it's low profile, and it's a lot less mass, so it's lighter weight than a massive chuck when you're getting into those larger 630, 800 millimeter, 1000 millimeter applications. It can be just the right solution for a customer. The FSW system is a full quick change system when you need to quick change the chuck to a different chuck. Um, it's an integrated system and we work hand in hand with our customers to make sure everything is exactly the way they like it before they even consider investing in that. But it can be just the right solution if you're doing that kind of changeover. The NSL Turn is a fantastic product. It's based on our Vero S module quick change palleting system. And it's a pneumatic release system where you simply apply one of your shop air hoses and you can lift the entire fixture, your chuck, or a turning fixture off of your machine, install another one and take your air line away and you are ready to run. So uh, when you're doing rotational quick change of fixtures and larger chucks, we wanna take a look at the NSL turn because um, that can really be the game changer on that. So next we'll take a look at our tech line. The tech line are selected chucks that typically are associated with specific industries and applications. They have optimal functions, so they serve uh, more specific demands. Uh, the NCE chuck is a very lightweight chuck, so if you're running operations where you're constantly changing um, spindle speed, you know those ramp up and down times where the machine's trying to go to a higher RPM, trying to go lower, lower RPM, and your tool's waiting to address it, uh, we find that you have about a 30% reduction in chuck inertia so that it cuts those times. And if you're running production work, that's super important. That can add up to tons of time and money over the course of longer runs. Next, the NCR chuck, and this is one that's near and dear to me. This is our six jaw compensating chuck. So one of the things we struggle with in chucking parts on lathes, as you guys all know, is deformation. You're squeezing the part to hold it and you've got hydraulic pressure behind it. So you're squeezing the part, you're creating a feature, a bore or a turn or a groove somewhere. And when you release that pressure, the part shows some deformation, some form error. And so either that's gonna be outside of your print callouts, or if you have subsequent operations like a heat treat and a grind, or you're making gears, or you're you know, making gear blanks, bearings, rings, then you have to leave extra material for machining on it. it can, you can be chasing, uh, chasing money around on this. The NCR chuck, reduces that form error, and we worked hand in hand to tell you what that would be before you invest in it. But it reduces that form error to single digit percentages of what you would see with a three jaw chuck. If we move down to the Rota 2B, it's a fantastic long stroke two jaw chuck, uh, very popular with casting work or unique geometry. If you have a unique part that really is tough to hold on a lathe, we can work with you on some custom top tooling to hold that part, and often the Rota 2B is the answer to that. Uh, the next one down is the Rota NCO. Uh, the NCO is a fantastic uh, high clamping force chuck. It's sealed center hole and also has uh, sealed uh, features on the chuck. So it's ideal for VTLs and uh, environments where there's a lot of debris and uh, contaminants in your work environment. So it doesn't get inside the chuck. It doesn't cost you a lot of extra PM time to be tearing things apart and cleaning them. And also uh, the same with the Rota NCA. That has a large through hole, some extra clearance for tooling, but is also uh, has minimal maintenance required. At the top right of that column, or that slide that we see there, is our Rota TB series. Now these are a wonderful air chuck. Uh, they come in moderate sizes all the way up to very large sizes. Uh, they were designed originally for the oil patch industry. So you can see they have very large through holes for originally for a big pipe to go through to be threaded, but can be very handy for you if you have large parts that need to be buried in there. Um, we'll typically see these on, on lathes, but we can also see them on VTLs or machines that don't necessarily, maybe they don't come with a hydraulic 
uh, cylinder or any ability to do that. So we can provide these standalone um, in the TBS series to operate without any external supply, just an air hose at the beginning of the cycle, and then can be removed. Uh, the NCF chuck is another power chuck, and this one offers uh, centrifugal force compensation so that you can clamp at very low pressures and still spin at relatively high RPMs without losing gripping force. It's something that we're all challenged with, and in turning applications, you chase that a lot. Um, so going down there, there's some more THLs. We've got a THL A and the S. Uh, these are self-centering, and uh, the A is a little larger overgrip. If we can move on to our engineered uh, series, which is the next one over. So these are almost application specific. These are for customers that have very unique needs. Um, the first few chucks there are typically can be automotive or special part application, whether you're doing shaft work, you need a center in the middle, that type of thing. Um, and then down towards the bottom, it's worth mentioning, mentioning excuse me, um, our Arota NCM series. These are a very interesting and useful hybrid chuck. They integrate our chuck technology with our electro-permanent magnet technology. So we have the ability to uh, have both the manual and automatic version of these where you can place your part, whether it's a large ring or a bearing or whatever the part is, you can come in and center it with some chuck jaws, which eliminates the having to indicate it on a VTL, for instance. You can energize the electro-permanent magnet and then retract the jaws, both manually or automatically, <clears throat> depending on which chuck you use. So the part is retained magnetically, it's centered to the chuck, and then you have the ability to machine potentially three sides of that part, which can eliminate a lot of setups and make those diameters between the bearing race and the OD and the face run very true to each other. So this is just a highlight of some of the chucks that Shunk offers and what you can expect on return for these. But we work with you on all of these chucks for your applications to make sure that we're making the right choice. So I'd like to touch base on a recent application that we had uh, where a customer bought this style machine. Um, they were, you know, obviously they were issued the standard power <clears throat> wedge hook design chuck that came free and they knew that wasn't going to do the job for them. So they reached out to Shunk and uh, we went over and met with them. And I'd like to, I'd like to run through some of the decision making and, and calculations that we did with them. And this will be brief. We're not, I'm not going to get bogged down in the details, but it's important to understand. So when we went and met with them, uh, we looked at their needs. Uh, setup time was important. Flexibility was important. They had some low volume parts. And uh, <clears throat> so we focused on the THW Plus. And this is the style chuck that we decided to go with. Quick change, long stroke, good clamping forces, some center options. And um, <clears throat> so we evaluated this chuck for them. And so let's take a little look at what we uh, went over with the customer and, and some of the information they gave us. So this is what this brings to the customer, some of the values they were looking for. Fast chuck uh, jaw change, right? Stop with all the wrench turning and blowing of air hoses and reboarding jaws. So just take them out, put them in a matter of seconds, minutes for the whole changeover. Easy use for the operators, a really big one. Most of our manufacturing partners are struggling to have enough higher skilled people in the shop. And so they can't have setup people going over installing jaws, having to indicate them in, rebore them. They want, a, they want a chuck jaw they can just put in and it's gonna run the job. So also this chuck's excellent for manufacturing small lots because of those features we talked about before, uh, the rapid uh, change of the jaws, uh, the ability to turn the masters around, the master jaws when you change them over, it's very easy to have the first and second operation uh, ready to go and no rebore of the chuck jaws, like I said. I'd like to run a very brief uh, graphic video here. It's short, so please bear with us. So we're looking at the road of THW Plus. There's the chucks. Looks like it's got some serrated hard jaws on there. Shows the operation that we're familiar with, just clamping and unclamping. 
showing the internals of the chuck and get a little better look. There's the wedge bar design. You can see how it actuates different from that old wedge hook design that you see. It's a lateral force of precision guidance drawing those jaws in and out. And that's what makes the chuck so precise. All moving in tandem, very equal chuck jaw forces against the three jaws. This shows the ease, ease of uh, changing the jaw. When you rotate that wrench, the wedge bar guidance drops out and you simply grab that jaw with your hand, pull it out. You can flip it around or install a new jaw, release the wrench, and you're ready to run on that jaw. That's how quick it take, takes to change the jaw. There's the little actuator, 90 degree turn, comes clear of the jaw masters. Right back into the precision guidance. Ready to go. There's some guidelines on the side of the chuck there on the face to show you the range of the front of the master. So it's not really guesswork where the jaw goes, you know where it goes. And then there's some very flexible center options. That's showing just the through hole sleeve. Three quick cap screws come out. You can install a deep stop. Ready to run. So it's just a little graphic and uh, I know it's, you know, it's good, it shows, it shows the features of the chuck. So hope you enjoyed that. Now we're gonna take a quick look at the information that we reviewed with our customer. So we listed the chuck that we were recommending. They had an A28 spindle. They went ahead and purchased the jaw starter pack, which includes some fantastic claw jaws for op one parts, and also some soft jaws for different operations. They gave us their shop rate of $110 an hour cost per, for the machine. And they also gave us the number of setups they do on average per week. And they said it was 25 setups average a week. Now the time to change the jaws on their existing chuck was about 15 minutes. And we consider that to be a conservative number. That included loosening up the six cap screws, sliding the top jaws out, blowing those off, blowing out the guidances to the jaw, um, going to the bench, removing the cap screws completely, blowing off the T-nuts, getting the other jaws, reassembling them. So 15 minutes was conservative. And then we demonstrated the THW jaw change, which at the high end was three minutes. So these numbers are very solid for doing a calculation. So that's the input data from the customer. Next, we'd like to look at the investment that they were looking at for this THW plus 260 chuck. So on the top line is the THW plus 260 with the 81 millimeter through hole, and it's a Z-mount chuck, which means it's flexible to adapt to different chucks. Just under $8,000 for that chuck. The next line down is a flange adapter that goes to their A28 spindle, and then the chuck mounts to that. That was just over $1,300. We have a draw tube adapter to adapt the chuck to their existing factory draw tube. That was a little over $750. And then the jaw starter pack that they purchased with the claw jaws and the base jaws and soft jaws uh, was a little over 3,000. Totaled out list price was just under $13,000. So we think we've really nailed the, the input data which the customer provided. And here's very transparent look at what they invested in uh, to change their current state. So if you look at the next slide, we'll compare their current state with their future state after the investment. These two charts on the bottom, the first two lines are the same. It's machine cost per hour provided by the customer and the number of jaw changes per week provided by the customer. Now the time to change the jaws, we worked with them on that. They gave us 15 minutes and we demonstrated three minutes for the THW. If we total it up across the 25 setups a week, we look at uh, spending six and a quarter hours on chuck jaw changes with their current state. And once they've invested in the THW chuck, they're spending one and a quarter hours a week. 
So if we look at the total $110 per hour cost, of that in their previous state, they were utilizing 92 minutes and, or $92.81. And of that hour, 17 minutes and 19 cents were, were spent on chuck jaw change. If we move over to the THW in the future state, the production that out of that 110 is $106.56 is spent making parts and changing jaws out has been reduced to $3.44. So it's a dramatic difference. So when we plug that all into an ROI calculator, I know we all look at uh, graphs and bar charts all the time, but this one's pretty clear cut. If we look at the little box, the time savings per week was, an, uh, was five hours a week. And the cost savings per week at $110 an hour was $550 per week. So based on their initial investment of $13,000, it took a little over 23 and a half weeks to pay off that investment completely. And then for the remainder of that first year, their savings or return on their investment will be $15,600. They agreed on these numbers and projected out five years, we're looking at $130,000 return on investment for $13,000 investment. You know, this is this is like magical stock return. This is this can't be left on the table. And you know, so this is demonstrates that rotational work holding is so often overlooked, but it's a it's an obstacle to production capacity. So Shunk offers over 50 types of standard chucks. Uh, we have this uh, chuck portfolio just to go through as a visual guide, and I'd be glad to send that to you. We also have our complete hardback paperback back, or hard copy paper catalogs or PDF version that I'd be glad to send to you or bring by. And of course you can access our uh, complete product group on our website. Uh, it shows the Shunk website there. If you add a shunk.us.com, you'll go to the US website. It'll all be in English and you won't have to hunt around, but, but those are great resources and we'd like to put them in front of you for your use. So uh, in closing, I just wanna say that I appreciate your time and hope we've demonstrated or at least shed a little light on how much opportunity there is to improve throughput and value streams in your facility by evaluating your rotating work holding. Myself, based in Ohio, you have access to my 30 years of CNC turning experience, as well as technical and sales support from our US-based team in Mooresville, North Carolina. It's a unique success team waiting to engage you. I'd love to come by your facility to discuss how we can help or during the current challenge. If you'd like to meet online, I'm available for that as well. So please reach out.